Good morning. morning. Our order of service this morning, Divine Service 3, page 184. We do have Holy Communion this morning. We begin with our first hymn, number 503. And as always, we prepare for worship with the ringing of the bells. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart 
and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. And I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. It is he who remembered us in our low estate and rescued us from our foes. He who gives food to all flesh. Give thanks to the God of heaven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. 
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Uh, Please note that uh, the first reading this morning includes a little bit more than is printed on the back of the bulletin. So if you like following along with the readings, um, just know that there is a little bit more than what made it into the bulletin. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost is written in the 18th and 19th chapters of the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt where you lived, and you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan to which I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. You shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my rules. If a person does them, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. But in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. And you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. But you shall reason frankly with your neighbor lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Their voice has gone out to all the earth. The epistle reading, the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, the first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, 
bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, And he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three, do you think, proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our confession of faith is the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father of all maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of Jesus, amen. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is the command of God. It is the law of God. In many ways, it is a summary of so many of the various laws and rules and commandments that God has given to his people. It is also, particularly when we look at the gospel lesson this morning, when Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, it is the question, the, uh, the great Lutheran question, what does this mean when we say to love our neighbor as ourselves? What exactly does God expect of us? How shall we live in obedience to God's command? The Old Testament reading from Leviticus gives us a number of examples, a number of uh, demonstrations of what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. And most of them can be summed up pretty simply as do no harm. That is, anything that causes hurt or harm to a neighbor is quite the opposite of love and is breaking the commandment of God. And whether that be physical harm or even some kind of uh, psychological or emotional harm. Uh, God mentions things like cursing the deaf or tripping the blind, lying and stealing and slandering one another, meaning insulting others, taking vengeance, bearing a grudge, doing injustice. All of these things are sins that is contrary to God's law, not just because God uh, kind of makes up some rules about how he wants us to live, but specifically doing these things brings harm to other people. And in many cases, doing these things, if you do these things, you bring harm to yourself. Uh, and God does not desire the hurt or the harm of his people. Therefore, the commandments are about protecting people from harm. And instead of doing harm, doing good. And so love has this active component also. That is, if the, if the only thing you take from the law is do no harm, well, then that can justify all sorts of other things. If, it's, if we're not the ones causing harm, it's easy to ignore. It's easy to, to kind of a cold uh, neglect of people and say, well, I didn't cause the harm. And just, but no, actively helping, actively doing good. This is the, uh, the, the dimension of this that Jesus adds when he talks about the, the parable of the Good Samaritan, which so many of us know so well. That it's not enough for the priest and the Levite to pass by on the other side and say, well, I'm not the one who caused the harm. But instead, to truly fulfill the law of God, to do good, to show love to the neighbor means to act, to give help to the man who is hurt, to give healing to the one who is who is beaten and bloody and dying to rescue him and save him. And so in that sense, the Samaritan is the hero of the story. Not only because he doesn't cause harm, but because, because he actively helps. He sees the man in need. He has compassion upon him. He heals him. He, he, he pours oil and wine on his wounds. He brings him to a place of safety where he can recover and rest. All of this is complicated by the fact that we live in a world that is thoroughly corrupted by sin. All of God's creation is fallen. 
It is corrupt. That is, wherever we look, there is pain and suffering everywhere. There is hurt and harm everywhere we look around us in the world. Elsewhere in the Gospels, Jesus describes this as a burden that people must bear whether it be physical ailments like sickness or disease or weakness, or whether it be psychological or emotional or spiritual things that cause pain and suffering to our minds, our hearts, our souls. There are burdens that each of us bear. And so that commandment to love your neighbor that is not to do harm, but rather to do good. We can look at it this way, that when we look at the burdens of our neighbor, are we helping? Are we trying to lighten the load, lighten the burden? Trying to make our neighbor's life easier? Or in sin, are we doing the opposite, making that burden even heavier? piling on more and more and more and crushing people. Again, all this in theory is pretty simple. Don't do harm. Do good. Help those who are in need. And if you see people in trouble, by all means, don't make it worse. And don't just pass by on the other side and neglect people who are in need, particularly when you are in a position to help. But again, because we dwell in a world of sin, of darkness, of death, because original sin corrupts each and every one of us, our own thoughts and feelings and desires corrupted by sin, these seemingly simple commandments become impossible. We can't do it. Or we don't do it. I'm sure each of us can remember plenty of times in our lives where we saw someone in need, someone hurting, and we said to ourselves, hey, not my problem, and walked by on the other side. I'm sure each of us have had times in our lives where we've actually made things worse. In our greed, in our selfishness, in our conflict with other people, our hatred, our lust, whatever our sinful desires affected someone else negatively. We did harm to others to benefit ourselves. This is the reality of sin. And even when, by God's grace, the the Spirit of God enables us to do what is good, to do what is right, to help those who are in need, and thanks be to God, we have many opportunities in our lives to do this. Even then, it's not enough. Even then, it's never enough. There are always problems that we can't solve. There are always people that we can't help, no matter how hard we try. There are some sins, some weakness, some diseases, some pain, some suffering that we just can't deal with. It's beyond our capability. We are tempted to look at the parable of the Good Samaritan in such a way that we make ourselves the hero. That is, we we take Jesus' warning or or his his, uh, advice, go and do likewise to heart, and we say, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to go out and we're going to find people in need and we're going to help. We're not going to look by. We're not going to stand by. We're not going to pass by on the other side. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the good Samaritan. I'm going to find people who are in need, and I'm going to help them. That's wonderful. Except that you can't. Not perfectly. 
Not enough. What happens when we try and fail? What happens when our own weakness, our own sinful thoughts and feelings and desires get in the way? What happens when our own laziness gets in the way? Jesus is teaching us something else in this parable. And that is, the Good Samaritan ultimately is Jesus himself. The parable is a description of his work, his love, his compassion for us. Because when we consider the reality of sin, of original sin, of weakness, of suffering, of death in this world, if we are to place ourselves into the parable, we're not the hero. We're the man who's beaten, who's bleeding, who's suffering, who's dying. We are the people who cannot help themselves. We are the ones in need. Particularly as we consider eternal questions of heaven and hell, eternal life, eternal death, sin and grace. We're helpless. We cannot do everything that God demands. We cannot be perfect. And so we are in need. And it is our Lord Jesus Christ who has compassion on us and who stops to heal us. It is our Lord Jesus Christ who came into the world to take upon himself our sin, our suffering, our weakness, our disease, our disability, everything that afflicts us and causes us hurt and harm, Jesus takes upon himself. And he goes to the cross. And he gives his life there for us. Before you leave this morning, go back to the, uh, go back to the hymn we just sang and count up how many times it said, for us laying out everything that Jesus had done and what's the purpose of it for us. Jesus is the hero of the story. He is the one who speaks to us the forgiveness of sins. He is the one who rescues us from sin and death and the power of the devil. He is the one who snatches us out of hell and brings us into eternal life. As Paul says this to the Colossians, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Jesus is the true neighbor, the one who shows love to all those who are in need. That's us. And when we fail, when we hurt, when we suffer, Jesus shows his love and his compassion and his forgiveness to us. He brings us into his church where he tells pastors and teachers and parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters and fellow Christians, hey, take care of this person until I come back. And as the church, we do our best to do so. And so then, as we leave, that is here, we come to to receive the gifts of God, to hear his word, to receive the body and blood of Christ, all of this like, like medicine, like bandages, things that bring health and healing to us in our suffering. Having received these wonderful gifts of God, we then go out into the world. We go back to our own jobs, our own families, our own lives with a new hope. A new enthusiasm to share this love of God. So that when we see others, neighbors, who are hurting, who are suffering, then we have the opportunity not only to do good, from us, but to share with them the love of God, to share with them the love of Jesus who has done all things good for us 
who has forgiven our sins and given to us everlasting life and salvation. We have that opportunity to bring a comfort, a hope, and a peace that comes from God that we ourselves could never provide. Go and do likewise. Yes, this is the commandment of God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do no harm. Help those in need. Don't just pass by on the other side. But when we fail, when this becomes a burden too great for us, when we ourselves are the ones suffering, bleeding, dying, look to Jesus. He is our good Samaritan. He is the one who has had compassion on us. He is the one who heals us, forgives our sins, gives us everything that we need for life in this world and the promise of eternal life in his kingdom. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. To the good gifts of God in all creation, everything that we need to support us in this body and life, let us pray to the Lord. For the spiritual blessings of God, for the forgiveness of sins and the newness of life that comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For faithful pastors, teachers, and missionaries, for the proclamation of the word of God in all the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those attending the convention of our church next week, that their work may be done to the glory of God and the good of his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our youth, particularly those who are attending the gathering this week, that God would grant them safety in their travels and strength in faith and Christian life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our families, for faithful husbands and wives, responsible fathers and mothers, and obedient children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord In thanksgiving to God for the gifts of life, the birth of a son, Braden, to Joe and Amy Seibel, and the birth of a daughter, Elena, to Chris and Sarah Maul, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in authority over us, in the church, in civil government, and in our homes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those who serve in the armed forces, in law enforcement, in disaster relief, and as first responders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all people in their particular vocations, that they may continue in their good work, in love for God and in service to their neighbor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those who are sick or hospitalized, for our shut-ins, for anyone suffering any distress of body or soul, let us pray to the Lord. O oh, Jesus Christ, our good Samaritan and only mediator, you have seen us in our guilt and blood and had compassion on us. Of your infinite mercy, you gave your innocent blood in payment for our sins, that we might live. We humbly thank and praise you that you have saved us from destruction. By your holy word, you have brought us to the saving knowledge of you, our Redeemer. We implore you, enable us by your Holy Spirit to love you, the true God, with our whole heart and to love our neighbor as ourselves, that we may show mercy on all men in their needs, bind up their wounds with tender care, and ever follow your example of love and service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faith the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Good morning and welcome once again. Just a couple of announcements this morning uh, about things that are upcoming. Um, next week, uh, Sunday, July 21st, uh, is our uh, hymn sing service. Uh, if you saw uh, the bulletin,